All right. Well, welcome everybody to today's Talk with Doc. Uh, it's my honor to have several friends with us and we'll be having many surprises popping in throughout the day. Um, but today's Talk with Doc is uh, the wonderfully made conference sneak peek. And, and joining me today, uh, first off, is Laura Satorsky and Elizabeth Barnett. They are uh, part of our, our SOAR team. Uh, and let's just take a minute. Uh, Laura and why don't you introduce yourself? Just tell everyone what, what you've been doing with SOAR, and then Elizabeth, you can jump in as well and, and share what, what your part is with SOAR. Yeah, so I'm Laura, and I'm the SOAR Activities Director. Um, so right now we're running virtual respite nights, getting the conference ready. Um, we've done a virtual summer camp. Before COVID, everything was supposed to be in person, but I started in February, so right about when everything hit um, for us. But yeah, we're just, for my job, creatively finding ways to reach our families, both through phone calls and virtual events at the moment. Awesome. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I um, just joined staff with SOAR on July 20th. And so I'm interning um, with SOAR and learning a lot about um, all aspects of our ministry and work with Laura pretty closely um, helping with our events and then um, work with Doc with church consulting and um, learning a lot about special needs ministry. Yes, and so today we are going to be just talking about the Wonderfully Made Conference and showing you some uh, clips from the conference. We got uh, over 65 speakers uh, from all over the United States and Canada who are going to be, be there. We have two of our speakers with us right now. Uh, Bronwyn Murphy and Joanna French, both are uh, just a, amazing individuals, disability ministry leaders, um, do a great job. We'll hear from them in just a minute. Um, and, you know, want to encourage you to make sure you, you sign up and that you're a part of this conference. Um, and I want to make it even easier for you. Um, so for listening to the conference today, um, we are going to give out a 20% discount to anyone who who signs up because they listen to this, this talk. And so if you use the promo code, talk with doc, everything capitalized, that'll take 20% off your uh, admission ticket. So talk with doc, and that's good off of either the family or the ministry ticket, talk with doc, all capitalized, make sure you use that. Um, but we want to have you with us and we're excited to have you. Um, so uh, with that, uh, Laura, do you, what do you want? Do you want to show a quick clip or just start talking with Bronwyn and Joanna? Um, Bronwyn, do you mind if I show a quick clip of yours and then we'll let you go? And then go, go for it. Go okay. For it. I love to hear myself on recording. I love it. <laughs> this uh, clip is of uh, Bronwyn's waffle analogy. I'm talking about uh, church culture, which is pretty great. I got the pleasure of watching the talk and it's wonderful. And we, when we talk about this, we want to build a culture. So when we talk about inclusion, we're not just saying, hey, add another program to your church. Because churches, again, the modern church, we love programs. In fact, I have uh, something, um, it doesn't look great, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to show the illustration. It's a waffle. Um, this one has chocolate chips in it. Um, my kids love these for breakfast, but what I love about this for this purpose is that all these lines are perfectly delineated and there's these perfect little squares. In the modern church, right, when we talk about programs, a lot of times we approach it this way, right? We're going to fit our programs in these nice little squares, right? But notice, these squares don't really touch each other, right? But they're nicely packaged, right? It looks really great. Right? It looks really great. And we say, hey, we got a program. But it's not, but inclusion is not really this way. Inclusion is not a program, it is a culture, right? When you're reimagining something like discipleship and how do you create inclusive pathways within your congregation, within your church, within your community of your church, it's not about a program, it is about a culture. Oh, you're muted there, Laura. All right. Also, I'm going to pause it there because we don't want to share all of it for everybody. Um, but Bronwyn, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your talk and why you're excited to be a part of the conference. 
Sure. Um, my name is Bronwyn Murphy. I'm out of Davis, California. I'm the inclusion coordinator at University Covenant Church, um, and I'm a board member um, of University Covenant Nursery School, our inclusive preschool we have um, at our church. And uh, my talk this time around was called Reimagining Discipleship, um, Building an Inclusive Culture in Any Church. And uh, yes, the waffle um, seemed uh, very um, apropos and uh, appropriate for uh, kind of talking about you know, how we build a culture and, and what actually really does work. Um, you know, I don't uh, claim to be a foremost expert in anything, um, but um, you know, my own experience and in talking and with this uh, great network of people, some of which are on here in the disability ministry community and um, just building a culture and how important it is um, to really look at some different aspects of it in your church. So um, that's what it's about. Um, if you were so intrigued by that, you wanna watch the next 52 minutes of that, I'm delighted, um, go for it and, and do that in October. So yeah, uh, but as far as the conference goes, um, I was able to attend in person uh, last year back when we were able to do those things um, in humanity. Um, and I got the privilege of hearing so many people and learning so much. Um, there's so many different uh, perspectives and people from different size churches and um, different kinds of churches all over the country, all, uh, you know, Canada, all over the place. Um, and it is really, really valuable. I think uh, with something like, you know, disability, inclusion, special needs, like whatever you guys, uh, whatever uh, you call it, um, it is so important um, because it is so different and every person is a different person. Um, you know, we don't just have one program for people with autism that works everywhere, or one program for people you know, with depression and ADHD, that's not how it works. And so it's really valuable uh, to hear um, you know, how you really build those cultures. Um, and it's great to hear from everyone. Like I heard Joanna speak last year and I was like, wow, who is this person? This is amazing. So um, yeah. it's tons of people like that. Yeah, and I think what's, what's amazing with it too, and, and Brian, when you can jump in on this, um, you know, you're, you're a seasoned you know, disability ministry leader. You've been doing this for a while. You've got a phenomenal you know, ministry that you're leading. But, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, you learn something every time you go to a conference like this. Oh. And you always walk away with things going, oh, this is great. I can do this now. And, and you know, there's networking. We're still going to have networking. There's ways we're going to be able to network, even though we're virtual uh, with this conference, which is going to be great. But, you know, it's not just for those who are looking to start ministry. We're going to have all kinds of great things to help churches start ministry. But it's also going to be for our, our you know, seasoned uh, leaders out there in, in everything there. So, you know, just touch on that real quick. That is absolutely true. I mean, I think every single time I'm in a conference or on a webinar, even if I've been tasked with leading the webinar, I learn things from people who are attending. Um, I think something like disability ministry, um, part of why I really love it is um, that it is really outside of the box, right? I, I love things that are outside the box and things um, that you can kind of uh, mold and create and see how God is working and really follow um, that path. I, you know, I do think uh, disability ministry is a newer kind of venture for a lot of um, churches, a lot of faith communities, and uh, that really excites me. And so I really love learning um, from other people. Um, and look, Diana's coming on. She's one of those people. Um, I really love learning um, from folks. And there are things that I come away with that I'm like, oh my goodness, I have never thought that before. Or I've never thought about that. Or things I thought, oh, I think about that all the time. And I thought I was the only one, right? Um, and this is so valuable. There are times in ministry that I come across something and I say, oh, I know who to talk to with this. I know who I, know who I can go to with this. Um, and it is so, so valuable. I love networking. I love connection and so these kinds of things are, are just fantastic yeah yeah and, and that's one of the the greatest things that we can all learn from one another and and make these amazing friendships and and, and, and with that you know jo joanna is a, a perfect example of that um uh you know I, and i think we've got a a clip of one of joanna's um talks why don't we bring up here and just just you're muted again. Oh, I said I don't have a have one at the moment, but I can go get one. Oh, that's that's all right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll talk to you, and I'll I'll talk about you know, Joanna real quick. We'll bring Joanna in. Um, and what I love with you, Joanna, you know, why don't you tell us a, a little bit about your experience, Joanna, and and wonderfully made conference last year was your first year. But what I absolutely love about you is. How, how you show that truly any size church can be doing a disability ministry. You've got a church of 100 members, 100 people, attendees on the weekend, and you are doing 
an amazing job, amazing things with with the individuals with disabilities in your your community, and and you know, made great great connections. You're now writing blogs and and just doing. God's using you in such great ways, and a lot of it is because of connections you made last year by being a speaker and and coming back here. So why don't you just touch on some of that? Well, thank you. Um, like you said, my name is Joanna, and I'm the special needs pastor at Flint Hills Church in Junction City. I absolutely love the Wonderfully Made Conference for like 100 reasons. Um, probably the closest one to my heart is when I'm there. I don't have to explain why special needs ministry, like why we do that and why it's so close to our heart. It's not just this weird idea, but everybody gets it. I love the fact that um, there's 100 different people with different input and different ideas and you can learn from them and you can walk through their experiences and be able to apply that and obviously there's going to be some shifting and changing but being able to apply that to circumstances in your church and i just think that it's so valuable not only to have that when it comes to the networking and things like that but also to be able to have the camaraderie of people who get it i have two special needs children of my own and it's just it's such a wonderful feeling to be around people who understand and who celebrate those who are different from us. Right. And I, I want to also have, you, you know, it's this, this conference is also vital for families just like yours with, with kids with, with special needs. Um, we've got a whole track just for, you know, families. Um, you know, why don't you, you talk on, on some of that and, you know, you know our, our whole hope with the conference is, you know, our, our theme is strength for today, hope for tomorrow. And, and we want to be able to fill each family and, and be able to give them strength to make it through today and know that there is hope for tomorrow, that you're going to be able to get through that. Um, obviously, our hope is through Jesus Christ. Um, but, you know, also by creating partnerships with amazing organizations, by finding churches you can get involved with, but then having some of these great talks that can give you what you need in your tool belt to be able to, to survive and just make it through your day. Um, can you talk on that? Yeah, so um, one of my, um, last year, one of my favorite things was meeting Lamar Hardwick. Um, he is high functioning autistic and fabulous and he makes me smile. And it was great because um, interacting with him, I just, I looked in the future of my boys and I know that everybody with autism is different. When you meet one person with autism, you've met one, but, um, it's just so precious to me to see um, adults with autism interacting and becoming valuable members of society and making a difference. You know, Lamar affects change. He makes a difference. And so um, it's important to me to know that there's hope and to know that there's um, a, a chance for my children to be wonderful, amazing things. Now, we know that in a logical sense that God has a purpose for all of our kids. But being able to sit down and listen to these talks and grow and be encouraged and see other mamas who've walked through it. And um, last year, I got to walk through the five love languages of a special needs child and things like that and stuff we would not have thought of. You know, we know we have love languages, but I walked away from that processing the fact that the reason that my kid is constantly hugging me is because his love language is physical touch. And that he needs that. He needs that to feel centered and connected. And so now, anytime that my son goes into a meltdown, the first thing we do is we hug him and we tell him he's wonderful and he's loved. Mm. And it's been such a shift for Caden. His meltdowns don't last as long. And it would seem obvious to do that, but my Jeremy, he doesn't want touched. And so having that shift of, hey, um, you know, they're, oh, my boys are always together. And so being able to see them as two separate um, needs made a big difference because they're both about the same area of the spectrum and just they've had so much in common that we've always kind of treated them with the same and you can't right. so I, I, but. yeah no that, that's powerful and, and, and so important but the, these are all examples again of, of things that you can learn um, from the conference um, well look I, I want to just shift over um, uh, my my, my sister from another mother is on here. Um, my, my dear friend, Diane uh, Doko Kim. How are you, girlfriend? I unmuted. Praise oh. God. I entered into the Zoom <laughs> unmuted. Look at that. You are a rock star. <laughs> to go. Um, well, uh, Diane is just phenomenal. <laughs> She's a parent. She, 
She's an uh, author. Um, she's an expert with disability ministry. Um, just a little of everything. And we're so blessed to have her be a part of this conference. Um, I don't know. Do we have a little snippet of something of Diane's? Or I don't know what we had. I, think I know we're saving I know we got, the meat of saving, it for later. We're, we're saving something very special. I want to. I, I want to I'm not play it, but we're, I want to tease it if I can. Is that okay? Absolutely. Um, oh my gosh, everybody. One of the most favorite things I've ever, ever seen in my life oh, is what God. Diane did for her talk. She, oh. You wrote it as well, I think, right? Yep. She wrote, directed, performed a rap in the style of Hamilton for disability ministry, special needs ministry. And it is fantastic. In fact, I've already told her she wins a Tony oh. Award and an Academy Award because it was so amazing. I mean, it truly is. Yeah. It is something everybody has to see. It's part of our hot topics. So everybody needs to make sure you're part of our hot topics on Thursday night. Um, maybe you can't do the entire conference and you can only do part of it. Make sure you do the hot topics. But I want to remind you, you can become a VIP. And for $25, you get every single talk, everything for an entire year. So you can watch it anytime. But Diane, welcome. Why don't you just share whatever's on your heart? Thank you. Well, my hot topic is basically going to be an encouragement for the reality of those of us who are trying to do ministry and special needs parenting. Speaking of which, hang on just a second. Jeremy, come back. Come back, buddy. Close the door. Have a seat. Sit down. Jeremy, put on your headset. If that's not a meta moment of what all of us are dealing with Amen. in the last six months, I don't know what is, right? Amen. So my hot topic is basically an encouragement and a celebration of disability ministry leaders who are already challenged with a challenging ministry and many of us are special needs parents ourselves and so we have a hard life that's been made harder we have a challenging ministry that's been made even more challenging because of covid and all of us i mean let's be honest it looks like this doesn't it right so i just want to acknowledge and celebrate my brothers and sisters who are towing hard and are undeterred from the mission so it's just more of a kudos and a blessing and a yay you yay us kind of moment yeah yeah so it again it it truly really, I, I couldn't have stopped from smiling from watching it um laughing because it, it it's just great and and saying amen 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 uh through it um and, and glad you had the the words on it because i was I, I was enjoying it so much. I was having a hard time following and had to watch it over and over. So again, you definitely want to have the VIP just so you can uh, watch this rap multiple times. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, she has a full choir backing her up with it. I mean, this girl went all out, all out. Um, it, it, is, it is top level um, worthy. So, all right. So um, don't hype me up too much because if there's one thing that this community knows best, is the secret to happiness and joy is lowered expectation. Amen. Amen. That that's true, but but you deserve it, girl. Uh, you deserve it. Thank um, you. And and obviously, you know, uh, uh, you you are also an amazing author. Why don't you go ahead and just share about your book um, as well while you got we got you on. Where is my book? Oh, here it is. Um, yeah, I wrote a book called Unbroken Faith, Spiritual Recovery for the Special Needs Parent. Many of us who are special needs parents never intended to be, um, but when we found out that we've got this complicated, complex bundle, we asked major questions of God, did we not? Why? Why? Why us? Why our child? Is God good? Is God real? How is the Bible relevant to this? And so as I struggled with the word of God, he didn't necessarily heal our son, but he healed me of my spiritual disability. So I think a lot of the core questions that so many of us have, whether you are a family affected by disability or not, when you're disabled by anything in life, yet the word of God has an answer. Yeah, so good. And, and you know what, uh, I'll, I'll speak now, especially to disability ministry leaders. This book is written perfectly to 
run a Bible study uh, for parents with disabilities. Um, there's questions in it, it just blends in perfect for that. Um, I've, I've even gone, I, I bought a couple of cases of the book and I give the book out to every family with a new diagnosis um, just to kind of help them start their journey um, with it. And they don't even realize they're getting, how much they're gonna need it, but it, it, it's so important. So if you're not familiar with, with Diane's book, you, you definitely need to, to make yourself aware of that and, and get that book. So um, Diane, we are so excited to have you be a part of this conference and, and uh, thank you and excited to, to highlight your, your rap that you're going uh, to be displaying and, and we will debut that on Thursday night of the conference with the hot topics. And, and again, for anyone that's just joining, uh, we want to be able to bless you and, and maybe even make it easier for you to come to the conference. So by watching this talk today, um, we, or, or any time that you may be watching this, we are gonna give you a discount code for the conference. So I'm taking 20% off the conference with the code talk with doc, all capital letters, talk with doc will take 20% off your registration, whether it's family or ministry, talk with doc. And we want to just bless you and, and be able to help you make it to the conference to see amazing speakers like, like Diane and everyone we got here. So Diane, again, thank you. Um, and I know you've got a lot on your plate. You're happy to go back to, to schooling and, and being the principal uh, again. Um, so thanks for dropping in. We appreciate you. Thank you. And I am looking forward to learning from you. This whenever we get together at a disability ministry conference and this is one of my favorites i it's a support group for me and for all of us so i am looking forward to learning from the best of the best so i'm so thrilled and looking forward to even virtually seeing you all so god bless you see you soon Absolutely. god bless and, and you know we really do have that this this truly is the the best of the best that we have um well you know it, as we can tell we've got many more of our, our speakers on here um one of welcome in Judy Redlick uh, with us. And, and Judy, you know, thank you. Why don't you just uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and, and uh, uh, what Wonderfully Made Conference means to you. You know, I love this theme, strong, strength for today and hope for tomorrow. It's such a dynamic theme. And I think if we remember that every day that God gives us that strength for today, and hope for tomorrow if we are looking to him for that second by second revelation. Uh, because life is a challenge. And um, I've been blind all my life and I've never really shared my story a whole lot, but I, I am excited about doing a hot topic uh, on blindness, living blind in an eye-centered world. And um, one of the things that you'll find about my presentations is both of them are story filled with tips so you got to listen to my stories to hear the tips because I love to help people tell their story and so um, and I feel like people might understand better if they hear a story because they could remember the story along with the tips Yes. And I, I love the Wonderfully Made Conference. I've been a part of it for, uh, this is my third year. And it's just so much fun to get together with everyone, uh, to just hear their stories and their insights, and to also meet people that are coming for the Wonderfully Made Conference and hear how they are benefiting from it. Yes. Um, and, and Laura and Elizabeth, you, you can help me out. If, I don't know what clips you've got to share. If we got clips of anyone here, you can jump in and let me know. We don't have a clip of Judy's, but I did have um, the opportunity to watch her um, feature talk yesterday and really enjoyed um, the story that you shared of Sally. Of um, Oh, you, know, you did? Yeah, someone that went to a church <laughs> that was uh, not inclusive and had a really bad, um, bad experience and then um, went back two years later and the church was entirely transformed. And so that clip was a little bit longer than what we'd have time for today, but it's definitely worthwhile to listen to the talk and um, really learn a lot about how church culture can change even in two years um, or less than that. You know, I enjoyed creating Sally, the character, because it's so much like I, it's really a story about me, but 
I called her Sally because I didn't want you all to think that. I, because, you know, sometimes you go to churches and that kind of stuff happens. So um, I made it as realistic. It's really realistic, don't you? Do you think, Laura? It is very realistic. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And, and you know, Ju Judy has, you know, I've, I've heard her uh, speak many times, and especially uh, her presentation on, uh, you know, living in a, you know, I, I say it wrong every time, living at eye-centered world. world. That's because you guys world. are the eye-centered. Right. And right. I am not an eye-centered person. In fact, if my screen is caught a cattywampus and my camera isn't showing me well, I am so sorry. But no, nobody is going to help me you're, adjust it. So, you're, you're set up just right. Um, but, you know, it is a, a fabulous talk. And, and again, it's great for any disability ministry leader to, to hear, to know how you can better uh, welcome individuals who are visually impaired or blind. Uh, and it's fabulous for any of our families. If you're dealing with, um, if you have a child who's visually impaired, uh, knowing that there's others out there and just that extra support um, are, are great things. So uh, Judy is a, just a huge blessing. And, and again, we love having uh, her be a part of, of our wonderfully made conference. And you need, again, another reason why you need to make sure you, you check out the conference and, and able to see um, what she's able to, to bring to it. We have so many great things. Um, and, and speaking of other you know, wonderful you know, speakers, we got Kim Bado. How are you doing today, Kim? I'm good. I'm good. I'm in my daughter's empty house. All right. So I hope I don't echo. <laughs> oh, you're okay. Why don't you just take a little bit and share with everyone about yourself? Okay. I am the mom of five, and my youngest two were adopted, one at the age of 10 and one at the age of 16. I also lead the kids ministry as well as the adoption foster care ministry at Crossroads. We have sites in Kentucky and Ohio, and we have about pre-COVID um, five to 6,000 kids a weekend. So it's, but the nice thing is that the locations, they range anywhere from 50 kids a weekend to thousands of kids a weekend. And, yeah. um, and work, I, I so appreciate you, I so appreciate you talking about trauma at this conference because so many parents who have kids who've experienced trauma, those kids have unique needs. Mm -hmm. And when, they, when we survey adoptive and foster families, the place they feel least welcome, do you know where it is? The church? It's the church, right. Yeah. And there are so many simple strategies and easily executable strategies that we can do to, to help kids from trauma feel safe and welcome so that we can talk with them about Jesus and then be part of their healing story. So yeah. I'm just thankful to have the opportunity to talk to your audience about yeah. this. We're, we're excited to have you and, and, and you know, you do a great job and, and, and you're absolutely right. You know, Trauma is a huge thing, and it's something especially this year. You know, we've always at Wonderfully Made, we've always talked about it. I think it's always important to talk about. But wow, this year especially uh, with COVID and the pandemic, and it, it's just really at the at the top of the list that everybody needs to be aware of and talk about. And it's not just the families that need to be aware of this. It's just like you said, the, the church needs to be aware of this. Every disability leader needs to know about this and know how we can better equip our families and better welcome them and, and lessen uh, the trauma. Uh, last thing we want to do is have any of this turn into PTSD because, um, you know, that, that is definitely there. But the good thing, even though there's trauma, we, we can do, there are steps that we can take to lessen the effect of it, um, to prevent long-term um, complications from the trauma. Um, and so we've got many great speakers who are gonna be speaking on this, including Kim, and, and just so many things we can learn um, from one another, which are so vitally important for all of us. So we are so appreciative of you, Kim. And again, you know, want to make sure that you realize 
we have a little of everything. Um, you know, we've we've actually there's going to be, oh gosh, you know, ladies, well over a hundred hours worth of of talks that are going to be available. Um, we also have many talks that are only available on our VIP um, service. Um, you know, one of them that I, I watched uh, just earlier this week that was phenomenal uh, is by Dr. Virginia Isbell. Uh, she is a psychiatrist out of Atlanta, Georgia, um, and just knocked it out of the park. Her talk was um, the pandemic, race, faith and disability and just phenomenal and and also brought into a lot of the the social injustice that is going on today and how that affects families with disabilities that you know again every single parent needs to hear every single ministry leader needs to hear however that talk is only available to our vip subscribers um, so, you know, you, again, uh, one of the advantage for being a VIP, there's going to be, we've got maybe an extra 20, 25 talks that are only available on VIP. So, you know, it's a great resource. And we're going to be adding new talks throughout the year um, to it. One of the first talks we'll add uh, through the year is actually going to be from our own Elizabeth Barnett. Um, uh, Elizabeth is an intern with SOAR. And she is completely self-funded. She is raising her own uh, income to be a, a resident and, and working with us. And she is going to share just on, on that journey and the importance of, of doing it. It's completely changed my mindset. And I think it's just a fabulous thing that can really open the door for a lot of churches to be able to have interns, to be able to have um, others join join your view and, and help out. And so Elizabeth will be sharing how you can have intern or how you can have a resident and do it as a self-funded um, aspect with it. So great opportunity uh, there with that. Um, one, one of my favorite things that we're gonna have part of the, the talk too, um, and we got, just happen to have two of them listed here, is we're gonna do a virtual disability ministry tour. Um, you know, one of my favorite things, whenever going on a, a, to a conference, whether you'd come to, to Grace Church, where we normally host the conference in Overland Park, Kansas, or, you know, if we go like in, in Fusion, uh, 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 Inclusion Live uh, in Cleveland and, and get to see the church there or wherever you go, it's always to see the disability ministry and take tours and, and do all that. Well, obviously, having a virtual conference, you're not going to be able to get in and see um, any of that. So, you know, thinking through that, how we can do that, you know, we got the idea, well, we will just do a virtual tour. Well, and we are highlighting seven ministries and showing off what they are doing. And, and what I love with it, I'm wanting to show you how truly any size church can do a disability ministry. And, and, We've got it perfectly where, you know, Joanna, like I said, with, with a hundred member, a hundred attendee church, um, and what, a hundred and fifty year old building uh, with a lot of limitations because of the age of the building, they're doing an amazing job with ministry. All the way to, we, we are highlighting Saddleback Church out in California a 30,000 member church with 19 plus campuses. They're doing an amazing job with ministry. And so I promise you, your church fits somewhere in between and you need to be doing something. Um, and so, you know, great things. Um, all the way to Bronwyn, she shows off what they're doing right now. They're not able to actually be meeting, but they're, they're using their inclusive preschool they're meeting outside and they highlighted what they're doing outside. Oh my gosh, Bronwyn, I want to come. It is so cool. And I can't wait for everyone to see what, what you guys are doing. Your outside outdoor ministry there just is phenomenal in, in the resources there. It's just great ways that we can all think out of the box. But one thing, as I've been going through this and working through this, God's laid it heavy on my heart. 
we need to bless ministries. And so SOAR, now I'm proud to announce, we are creating the Virtual Disability Ministry Directory. It will be hosted on our, our webpage, uh, on our uh, soarspecialneeds.org, and we'll launch it after the conference. But if you are out there, we want to be able to host every single disability ministry, give you the opportunity to show off what you do. You can have a five to 10 minute video. There's three reasons to do a video. One, you're showing families what you do at your church. You're giving them opportunities where you can get brand new families into your church. Not only that, think about it. One of the hardest things for a new family to come to your church is transition. Our individuals with disabilities have a hard time transitioning. So when a child can already see what's going on and even maybe see some of the leaders, it makes that a whole lot easier. So you're able to bring in whole new families to your church. Or let's say you go on vacation. Let's say Joanna goes on vacation and she and her family go to Cleveland or they go out to Davis, um, California. And they're like, hey, we'd like to attend service somewhere. They can check this out. It's searchable by city and state. And they can sit there and go, oh my gosh, look at Bronwyn's ministry. They welcome us. We can go there. We can see that and then even have the contact and be able to sit there and go. And it's just such a great resource. Second, volunteers. You're able to show everybody what you do and you're gonna have people who have a heart for individuals with disabilities who are gonna say, I want to attend a church like that. I wanna be at a church that loves others with disabilities and I'm gonna go there. And so you're gonna see new volunteers come to your church. And then three, it, you're gonna, it's gonna give you an opportunity to help other churches. What we, iron sharpen iron, just like the Bible tells us. We can learn from each other. We can see what each other does and get ideas and see how we can improve our ministries. Every church is different. Every disability ministry is different. We all do things differently. You gotta do what's right for your ministry. But oh my gosh, there are some amazing things that are being done out there that we can learn from one another. So those are three great reasons to do it. Many of you have wanted to do something like this, but it's just hard to get space on your church's webpage um, because space is so important. We take that out of the picture for you. We will host it. We will do it for you, and we just want to bless you. So if you're interested in being a part of that, please email us at info at soarspecialneeds.org. And again, that's info at soarspecialneeds.org, and we'd love to be able to talk to you and get that loaded. We, we're hoping to be able to launch with you know, a good 25 to 50 churches to start off. So uh, Elizabeth and Laura, I don't know, do we have any other clips or anything to, to show, to highlight? Yeah, I actually have a few with the things you talked about. So one is our heart is to equip everybody who comes to this conference, to equip ministry leaders in multiple different ways. Um, and I have a little clip from Beth Golick's talk, which is Hidden Disabilities in Your Sunday School Classroom. And this clip is just an example of one of the many different ways speakers are truly here at this conference to yeah. equip you. Give me just a moment and I'll get it playing. You got it. Um, for someone who's on the go, so for instance, maybe outside your worship area, um, you can have a sensory bag full of some tricks. So I brought one here to show you. So these are what's hanging outside um, the worship area of my church. And inside, um, you'll find um, some noise-reducing headphones. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, some fidgets, so like uh, this type of fidget. And um, some interactive books and um, we actually include a dry erase prayer sheet in here so that they can fill that out. And what we say is please help yourself to the sensory bag and return it to the welcome center at the end of the service so that we may prepare it for the next person. Um, and we title it with sensory overload, feeling fidgety. Um, and so okay. I'm gonna pause that one there too so that when you join the conference, you can be equipped with many more, both best talk has so many more resources for you to be equipped with, as well as many of our other speakers' talks. 
Um, and I see we have Melanie Gomez on with us. And Melanie, if you don't mind, I have a short clip of yours to share quick before you sure. share a little bit about you. Yeah. Um, Melanie is giving a talk that is five obstacles faced by special needs parents and the keys to overcome them. And in her talk, she just reminds us just the importance of um, loving your child and loving exactly who your child is and that they are who God has made them to be. My counselor teach, counseling teacher was right in that um, if I look back over the past 20 years, I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change it because um, Nick is perfect in his ways, in the way God made him. He has exceeded his prognosis in a lot of areas. He walks, he talks, he enjoys life to the fullest, but he also spreads joy um, and lives a glowing testimony of God's goodness, like most other people I know um, can't. Um, he experiences life in a way that most other people don't. And so I wouldn't change that um, to avoid a struggle on another, on another part um, of his life. He has been in, our, in the past 20 years a marriage glue that has kept my husband and I together. He's been instrumental in the design and um, creation of an extraordinary man, which is his brother, Ben. Um, I have realized my calling, my destiny, um, and just in sharing this story. And I realize now that Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and are called according to his purpose. Um, I know what that means. And I know that even me writing that book that I showed you earlier was part of that all things working together for good and of being called by God's purpose. I'm going to pause it there. And if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, Melanie, um, tell us a little bit more about your talk. And Sure. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I apologize. I had um, this morning, I woke up in my my camera on my computer didn't work and my microphone didn't work. So I'm on my phone, <laughs> but I am, uh, yes, my talk is, um, as you mentioned, five obstacles that special needs uh, parents face. And so it's based, of course, on my own experience over the past 20 years of um, life with a child who was born with a rare just genetic disorder. But also um, I've had the privilege of being in relationship with so many other special needs parents. And so there's some really common themes that come up for all of us. Um, not only are they common to just about every special needs parenting journey, but they're recurring issues that kind of we all face. Places we, we tend to get stuck. Things like disappointment, um, things like anxiety or, or fear. Um, places where you can just get stuck with a new doctor visit or a new symptom or a new setback um, or whatever it is, a, a new life change, a, a situation that's going to happen at home. Um, and so I kind of go through five of these areas and really unpack what the Bible says specifically about that area, because there's some really, there are really direct detailed instructions for overcoming. Um, just because your child has special needs, just because you're going through a valley um, because of a certain area or issue doesn't mean you can't have joy, doesn't mean you can't be content. The Bible um, the Bible's really specific about that, and that applies to us too. It doesn't just apply to other people whose lives look really easy and perfect on the outside. It applies to us, and it's, it's, but there are little tools and tricks that the Bible sh shows us that Jesus talked about that are in there. Um, and so I just kind of unpack those. They're things that we as believers kind of all know, but when you get into the day-to-day, -day, you sort of forget or lose a grip on some of those. And so it's just going to be a, a good reminder of some of those principles maybe um, presented in a new way, a way that's kind of a little bit 
work it out a little bit more in yourself so that you can um, you can live the life that you know God has for us to live even Melanie, you, all right, very good. You, you froze up there on us just at the last minute, but um, also we, we get, we got the, the gist of what you were saying there. And, and, you know, we've, we've been blessed by um, having you with us for past couple of years now. With one sorry. Of and you're good. And, you know, you, you do such a great job. Um, you're also an author. Um, so why don't you just take a minute and, and share about your book? Sure, thank you. And I'm, I apologize again that I'm doing this on my phone. Um, so I wrote a devotional actually that is, it addresses these five topics, but it also addresses, it's two weeks, so it's 14 topics, 14 areas where, again, we as special needs parents can tend to get stuck or find ourselves um, not holding on to some of the promises that we should. Uh, because of life, right? Because of uh, everything that we're facing. And so it's a devotional. So it's written with some storytelling um, of my own experience, as well as, again, um, I don't have any answers. The Bible has the answers. So my job really is just going to be reminding you of what the Bible says, showing you maybe hopefully in a new way um, that can shed some light on holding on to those promises and really finding the truth in, in what we can accomplish and do as parents. And so it's a devotional. It was written with new, newly diagnosed uh, mom in mind. Um, but I definitely heard from some. Yeah, so, you know, uh, uh, yeah, Melanie, you're, you're kind of breaking up on us there again. But, you know, again, want to encourage everyone to, you know, make sure you check out Melanie's book. But um, there are so many different things that you can uh, get in. And, and be a part of um, with this conference um, and learn from. Uh, um, you know, there, there's also um, for parents, uh, you know, we've got things any, anywhere from, you know, helping you with your elementary child to, to all the way to transitioning to adulthood and, and, and that. So there are just so many different things that that can help you through this conference. So there's there's a whole wealth of information. So we truly, one of the things that is so special uh, with this conference is there are so many different things um, here um, with that. And, and again, you know, Melanie just, you know, text in, sorry, her signal just isn't working well, but she promises at the conference, you'll get the whole talk. And, and that's the whole reason why we are, have actually pre-recorded every talk so that that's one thing we can promise at the conference. You will get a high quality talk for everybody. There won't be, you know, video going in and out. Um, uh, I had a, a, a friend who was in charge of a conference just a few weeks ago, um, and three quarters of the speakers got knocked out because of the hurricane that went through uh, the South. So that conference, it was all live speakers, and it just failed because they either lost power or, you know, just didn't have the communications. Um, so we're not gonna have that problem. Um, we are all recorded and everything's gonna be there. Um, the thing I am super excited about, we are gonna have Q and A sessions though that will be live and everyone's gonna be able to get in. It's gonna be very much like this um, where you'll be actually be able to see like on Zoom and be able to talk with the speakers after their talks. Um, so that'll be great opportunity. And at the same time, you're going to be able to contact any of the speakers. You're going to be able to contact any of the attendees and set up times to talk and, and just connect. And I really encourage you to be able to connect with, with people. Um, you know, there are, is just so much to, to learn from a conference like this. Don't miss out. 
Um, again, I want to just remind everyone, um, we are offering you an amazing 20% off discount um, with the promo code Talk with Doc. Talk with Doc, all capitalized. Put that in the promo code. It'll take 20% off whether you're doing the adult or whether you're doing the, the family or whether you're doing the, the uh, ministry uh, uh, programming. It, it's all the same. We're happy to try to bless you. Ministry leaders, get your families involved on this. Share it with them. Get your volunteers on board with this. This is so important for volunteers to go because it will make them better volunteers. Um, I, I invite my entire team to, to come to it, all my volunteers to it because they can learn so much. And I've had many volunteers who have said, you know, they learn so much and it actually helped them in being able to help um, uh, other individuals. And, and so that's just been, been so, so, you know, important and, and help, helpful as, as going through um, everything uh, with that. So, you know, don't forget that. Um, you know, you know, it's, it's just, I, I can't tell you the importance of, of having a conference like this, especially when this year, the majority of the conferences have all had to be canceled. So this is one of the few special needs disability conferences that, that's going to happen this year. We've got amazing keynote speakers. Um, we have uh, uh, Emily Colson, um, Steve Gersovich, uh, uh, Travis Davis, who's a self-advocate, Rex and Jennifer Hedler. Rex Hedler is a, a former major league ball player and the, currently the color commentator for uh, the Kansas City Royals, uh, their parents, and they're going to share their story. And then I'll be sharing as well. And so a lot of great things there. But I also just want to take a minute um, and just want to um, give a shout out to Bar Barbara Newman and, and her family. Um, she is a dear friend, a huge pioneer in, in disability ministry. Um, Barb this past week lost her fight uh, with cancer um, and was called home uh, to Jesus. And where I know without any shadow of doubt, uh, she heard, well done, my good and faithful servant. Uh, she has been a true pioneer uh, in disability ministry. She's the author of multiple books um, that should be in everyone's uh, library, in, including how to do accessible worship. Um, and so, you know, uh, our hearts are hurting. Um, actually, while we're doing this talk, they are uh, having her memorial service today. So our thoughts and our prayers go out to the Newman family. Um, huge, huge loss. She's, she's uh, leaving us far too early, but she has left just an amazing legacy. Um, uh, and just uh, we want to remember her. We want to remember uh, her family uh, as well uh, as we go through uh, all this uh, time. So I uh, encourage you to please be praying for the Newman family in the, in the days ahead. Um, and, uh, you know, just uh, I'm thankful for the friendship uh, I had with, with Barbara and all that she's taught me. Um, we've spoken at many conferences together. Um, and uh, she, if you've never seen, she does a talk on with a pink uh, puzzle piece and a green puzzle piece. That is just phenomenal. Um, I know you can find it out there. Um, on, on YouTube or, or on their, their website, um, all belong, uh, but go out. That's a talk you have to find on how we need to be able to piece everything together. Um, but we are all puzzle pieces and, and we need to find our, our spot. And, and Barbara um, was a master um, of that. And so I am extremely thankful. She's taught me a lot. And, uh, you know, my hope is uh, that in turn, we can uh, teach a lot, uh, people a lot. So uh, we, we want to uh, dedicate you know, this, this conference to her and, and just uh, thank her uh, for all that she's done as well. But we are coming up on top of the hour. You know, we, we could just talk forever. I want to thank all of our panelists who, who have come on today and just send out to all, all of you that are on here, see if any of you have any last, last things you'd like to share uh, before we end the day. Um, anyway, 
I just um, have been watching a lot of the talks and have been amazed at the quality of the speakers that we have and just the um, incredible insight that they bring in. I just really think that it's going to be a huge asset to our families and ministry leaders and there's a lot that you can take away no matter what kind of questions you may have there's a talk on it um, and I think that there's a lot of great areas covered. One thing I'm super excited about for the conference is the fact that it's not just a week to come get imported into. All that is very important, but it is a lifetime. Um, SOAR is here for you for a lifetime. Many, many, all of our speakers are here for you as a resource from here on out. I've been watching the talks too, and at the end, everyone's been sharing their contact information and saying, hey, reach out to me whenever. Um, because we're not in this alone. It feels like we're in it alone sometimes, but we're not. You have a whole community around you. So come to the conference and get connected with that community. I would say whether you have just a heart for special needs children or a family with special needs or you have heart for the ministry, no matter what happened that got you to this conference, God has a precious purpose for that, that he's going to use you and that um, he's going to use your children if their children have special needs. And just to find what it is God has to say to you, because God is speaking through a lot of people at this conference, people who are in it with you and want to invest in you. So please seek that and just invest in your relationships with people with special needs. I mean, I'd have to agree with, with all of you. So, uh, Wonderfully and eloquently said um, already, I think it is, uh, the connections are important in, in the seeing, you know, where and how God is working, and even just the fact that we're able to do this still, um, you know, online uh, through COVID and all this stuff, um, God is still working and uh, he's going to keep going. That's, that's one thing I've learned in ministry, even when I feel like I need to stop or, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what to do, right? God keeps going. So he's going to keep going um, far beyond, you know, that week in October when all these things happen. So uh, join us and uh, enjoy yeah so again i want to thank all of you uh it's been a great day it's going to be an amazing conference don't forget to use the promo code talk with doc all capital letters and you get 20 percent off the conference um next week our talk with doc um i'm very excited about uh we are going to be talking on restarting your disability ministry um, and I think that's going to be very important. We got many churches that are starting to, to restart or start talking through what that might look. Uh, we're going to have a panel that's going to be joining us. Uh, Joanna is going to be part of that panel. Uh, also have uh, Rachel Ryder uh, from Florida, as well as Allison Kelisek, uh from Pennsylvania joining us. So we're going to have uh, ministry leaders uh, who are, are doing it. Again, different sized churches. We're going to be talking through ideas, what to do. We're also we're going to be talking about volunteers, how to be recruiting volunteers, how to get your volunteers back in, and what do we need to do about training our volunteers as we're coming back. They've been out for six months. Do we need to get them all retrained and back on? So it's going to be a very important talk. I can't wait to have you all be back for that. Um, want to encourage you to you know to help us out. If you enjoy our, these Talk With Docs, I encourage you to, to help us in sponsoring them or just uh, in helping us out. You can go to soarspecialneeds.org slash donate and you can give and just help us and be able to continue these talks. But again, I can't emphasize enough the importance of, of coming to the Wonderfully Made Conference. You can go to wonderfullymadekc.com that's wonderfully made KC, the initials KC.com. We've got tickets for family. We got tickets for ministry. We got the VIP. We've got the Thursday night. Thursday night's included in your regular ticket, but if you can't do the entire conference, do that. Um, don't forget the VIP access. That gives you the entire conference whenever you want for the rest of the year. And promise me, I, I, I'm promising you, you want to see Diane's rap multiple times um you're gonna it's just it's that good and i as i've I'll, I'll second what elizabeth and laura said i've been watching many of these videos you're gonna want to watch them again because there is so much good information in them that you're gonna go back and go wow i need to hear that again and what's gonna be great with this six months later you can go back and say okay i need a refresher and here we go know 
that soar special needs, we're here for you. We love you. We love you as a family. We love you as, as ministries. We want to help you. We encourage you. We've got our, our family support groups, our parent support groups every month, uh, third Thursday every month. Contact us at info at soarspecialneeds.org and get a part of that. We're also doing virtual respite nights divided by ages, either our elementary teens or adults. They're kicking off again here in October. It's going to be a comedy theme and love to have you be a part of that. So again, welcome your entire church to come to that. If you're not doing anything, let us help you. But guys, thank you so much. We enjoyed having you all and can't wait to see you back next week for restarting your disability ministry. Come, soar with us. Bye-bye.